October is Black History Month and rightly Black History is being celebrated. Now whilst it's been good to see displays about black authors or black history in, in bookshops and there have been nods to famous black athletes on television, one area that does seem to have been lacking has been interest in black church history. It's well known that some of the most influential theologians of the early church were from Africa, Origen, Tertullian, Cyprian and most famously Augustine were all from Africa and these guys, they helped to shape or systematise Christian teaching and core uh, beliefs from biblical texts. But what happened then? What next? We hear practically nothing about non-white Christian teachers. Indeed, it can feel as though uh, black people, or kind of persons of colour, were only ever on the, re the, on the receiving end of Christian teaching. They were only ever those being taught, but never teaching themselves. Instead, the, the course of history seems to be weighted more towards the teaching about slavery. And what happens then? So as a person of colour, I really felt like this month I wanted to say something or, or present something to the church family. Now, maybe if I had a proper time to research, I would have spoken about my own homeland, about the history of Christianity in Mauritius, um, a country that's technically part of the African continent, but located in the Indian, Indian, in the Indian Ocean in a real mix of cultures. Or maybe I would have spoken about something much closer to home and talked about the, the sorry tale of the Windrush generation being turned away um, from the mother church, the Church of England, upon their arrival in England. But instead, I want to share something briefly about someone who's become, I guess, uh, an inspiration or a bit of a hero to me. I want to introduce you to Reverend Lemuel Haynes. Lemuel Haynes was born in 1753. He died 80 years later, and he's significant for being the first black ordained minister to a white congregation in the United States. He ministered for the most part in the town of Rutland in Vermont, and he overcame huge obstacles to become a much-loved and widely respected preacher across New England. He was, according to the title of one book, the black preacher to white America. In the United States, he's viewed, I guess, more with... Um, to, he's viewed more to do with sociological or political in history. Um, aged 21, Lemuel Haynes, um, this man who had clearly African features, he enlisted as a, a minute man and was connected, therefore, with the American army. He was an unashamed patriot of the American Revolution and a huge fan of George Washington. And yet for all the interest in his political thought and what it meant for the abandoned child of a white woman and an African man to minister in New England, what about his theology? What did Lemuel Haynes think about God? Lemuel Haynes believed in a sovereign God, a God who was sovereign over creation, over sovereign over salvation, over, over every action of the word, a God who had revealed himself to his people in his powerful world, word, a God who desires that we turn from our sin and repentance to trust in Jesus, and that the only way that happens is when the Holy Spirit quickens our dead hearts. Haynes believed that we needed to be ready for eternity, ready to face God in judgment, pleading Jesus' perfect works for us, but also having a life then transformed by the Holy Spirit inside us. In short, Lemuel Haynes was a Calvinist, uh, an experiential Calvinist, uh, a man with a deep personal spirituality and a fervent desire for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the areas where he ministered. If you know me, I guess you can see why I warmed to him. But let's go back to his beginning. Haynes was born on the 18th of July, 1753, in West Hartford, Connecticut, and he was mixed race. His father was of African origin, and we know nothing about him. His mother was a white lady. And it's not clear whether his mother was either a noble lady of the area or the servant 
of a wealthy family. In any case, we believe that his surname was the name of the, the household where he was born. In any case, he was abandoned by his birth parents and aged five months, he was given, he was handed over as an indentured servant to a man named David Rose, Deacon David Rose. And part of the agreement was that Lemuel would receive an education, which turned out to be an hour at the district school. But he was also exposed to living Christianity. Haynes was loved by the family. In his own words, he said that Deacon Rose's wife had a peculiar attachment to him. She treated him as though he were her only child. As his biography states, Though he was cast helpless upon the world, without a friend and without a farthing, he was thrown into a family who evinced towards him an uncommon degree of kindness. And it deserves to be remarked that this family was distinguished by the fear of God. So although indentured as a servant, he was taught to serve God primarily, and the, family, and the family environment in which he grew up breathed out Christian piety and prayer, not cold neglect or scepticism of the true faith. Lemuel learned to read and then read and read and read whatever he got his hands on. Thankfully, most of what he read was good Christian teaching. And at home, it was actually normal practice on a Saturday evening in preparation for Sunday for the Rose family to worship together. They would pray together, sing together, read scripture. And then frequently, Lemuel would read out the sermon. On one such occasion, he read a sermon on John chapter 3, verse 3. And the family really enjoyed it. And the head of the household, Deacon Rose, asked, who wrote that one? Was it Isaac Watts or George Whitfield? The sermon had the ring of a Whitfield preach. But Haynes blushed and hesitated, then confessed, it's Lemuel's sermon. Now, Lemuel Haynes was 21 at the time, and he had served some time in the army, but it was quickly decided that all should be done to ensure that Haynes would be equipped and be ready for pastoral preaching ministry. By the age of 21, he was recommended and qualified to preach, and he had his credentials signed off by a group of local ministers, and he became the supply pastor, supply pastor to a church in Granville, and he spent five years there. He married Miss Elizabeth Babbitt, a school teacher, a white school teacher, in 1783, and two years later he was ordained as an evangelist to minister in the town of Torrington, Connecticut. We know that Lemuel faced prejudice for his skin colour. We know that some stayed away from church gatherings because of his import of his because of his appointment. There's an account in his biography of a gentleman who actually allowed his curiosity to get the better of his prejudice and then did attend a church service. But as a sign of disrespect and displeasure, he kept his hat on. But then, just as Haynes began to preach, and Haynes, who had actually no sense of, of what was going on in the congregation, as Haynes began to preach, this man was gripped and kind of immediately threw the hat under the chair and listened with the most profound attention. And this event seemed to be a turning point in this former scoffer's life. That story is found in the earliest biography of Lemuel Haynes, a biography written by his close friend, Timothy Cooley. But even in this encounter, there's still almost an un unintended offence. When the scorner hears Haynes preaching, he is transformed and says, I now thought of him as the whitest man I ever saw. You see, I, I know of it's of its time, but that language feels as though purity of soul, that, that idea of having your sins washed away, is being equated with being white. In March 1788, age 35, Haynes and his family moved to West Rutland, Vermont, where he remained, where he became pastor to an all-white congregation. He remained there for 30 years. And depending on who you read, Haynes either voluntarily left that church because of his strong political views, or he was voted out by the church members 
because of a dispute with an elder because of those views. Either way, he was still very, very highly thought of by the congregation and there was absolutely no stain on his character. During his time at West Rutland, the, the congregation grew. Men, women and children came into a relationship with the living God. In fact, um, when you read his letters, um, you, you pick up a particular desire to see, his particular desire to see children awakened in the faith. When you read those letters, you you find there a, a real delight when he talks about youths, young people making professions of faith, and you find that also in some in snippets in his sermons that are addressed directly to children. Haynes was also known for challenging error. He wrote long letters to challenge and critique the popular universalist theology of the day. Nor was he afraid to critique other, church, other clergy who didn't hold to the Bible as the inerrant word of God. He sometimes did this with a particular biting wit. One young clergyman who thought little about um, having a, a thorough theological education told Haynes that he thought that ignorant ministers usually do the best, to which Haynes replied, well then, how much ignorance is necessary to make an eminent preacher? One of the other big themes in Haynes's writing is that of eternity, or rather more specifically, being prepared, being ready to die. Whilst we don't have a date or a year for Haynes's conversion, we do know from his writings that as a youth, he once sought shelter from a, a particularly tremendous thunderstorm. And that event caused him to reflect on God's judgment and God's anger against sin. Indeed, Haynes had other more obvious brushes with death. He nearly drowned whilst learning to swim, and he was once nearly gorged by a bull, that he was um, leading. The shadow of death crops up frequently in Haynes's writing, in his letters in particular. Um, he writes of gospel preachers who seemed to die before their ministry could even get off, up off the ground. He mused on the reasons why a, 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 particular, a particular candidate for ordination didn't turn up for their appointment. He wondered whether or not they had an accident and died upon the way. We realised that without rapid telecommunication, it could be days or even weeks before you could find out what had held somebody up from a prearranged meeting. Haynes also seemed sought after for funerals. Haynes was recognised for an ability to speak a word in season to those that are weary. Haynes's biography talks about um, his, his tender sensibility, his affectionate manner of address, his, his ardent heart towards those in suffering. And for the, for the last 11 years of his ministry, he spoke at about you know, 120 funerals, sometimes doing so twice in one day. And that's quite a feat when you realise that he was having to ride, you know, six to eight miles on horseback. And he was doing so up to the age of about 80 years old. In fact, Lemuel Haynes passed away on the 28th of September, 1880, 1833, aged 80. He'd been unwell for some time and he was aware that his time had come. Two days before his death, he was visited by a, a faithful Christian lady who was inquiring after his health. And as he lay down in his bed, he struck his breast several times and he replied in the, in the whisper of a, a weakened man. He said, happy, happy, happy. And then he, he lifted his arms upwards as if he was longing to depart. Lemuel Haynes was a pioneer and uh, an inspiration for ministers overcoming humble backgrounds. Lemuel Haynes ought to be better known, both in terms of his life story and his writings. Haynes didn't minister in the big city. He didn't draw big crowds. He didn't have his sermons published and sold to thousands. He didn't really keep a diary or even a, a journal of his inner thoughts or meditations. But that said, we do have his letters and sermons on, on a range of subjects, including his strongly theologically reasoned denouncements 
of slavery. All of which means it beggars belief that there's no current Christian publisher that has sought to publish his works in full, that has sought to bring his sermons and letters to the widest uh, possible audience, or even to commission an up-to-date biography of him. But if you do want to know more about Leo Muehlhaens, let me point you towards a couple of books. Firstly, um, this little book um, edited by Tabiti Anubile called May We Meet in the Heavenly World, The Piety of Lemuel Haynes. This includes just a, a snippet of his letters and snippets of his sermons. And then secondly, this book here, which includes um, kind of three full length sermons from Lemuel Haynes, again, talking about eternity. But my hope and my prayer is that in the is that in the years to come, more people of whatever if ethnicity would come to know and love the works of this wonderful man, this wonderful preacher known as the Black Puritan, Lemuel Haynes.